I think what I discovered as I got older is I did have a skill, but that skill comes so naturally to me. Like most mm -hmm. people that are good at something, they say, I don't understand why you can't do it. And managing people and interacting with people, and maybe it's part of how I grew up and trying to make everybody happy and juggle everything. Mm -hmm. I just can stay very calm in a chaotic world. And mm -hmm. I can see your point of view, your point of view, mm -hmm. the other person's point of view and come to consensus. Mm -hmm. curious about the going back to, you know, when your brother takes his life and, you know, you admittedly just, you know, bury it. And I think it's really honest, you know, um, and probably uh, not that uncommon to, you know, bury stuff that's so big. And, um, and then like, you know, you go on and, uh, see somebody who looks like maybe, you know, you didn't say this, but sounds to me like an escape, like into this normalcy, right? Like you're like, you're searching for normal, which makes sense, right? When you're having so much shit go on, like all you want is like some peace, really some, yeah. some normality in your life, right. To have things go smoothly, maybe. And you are looking for that and, and, and find your wife and then the job. And like, this is what we do. That's what I did too. You know, you're like, all right, I'm going to get into this life and this life is going to then solve all my problems. Right. It'll be all that I'm, I'm really looking for. But in reality, there's a lot of shit that got buried along the way that it doesn't just stay down forever. I mean, it's going to come up one way or another. So I'm kind of curious, you know, as you start to get into this, you know, um, big boy life, marriage, work, you know, with, with what you're bringing forward and, and not to mention, you know, and the, the truth is that, you know, I'm assuming like anyone, your partner isn't exactly who you thought it was, right? It's not all as normal as maybe you had hoped and they're bringing their stuff too. So yeah, that can, that, yeah. that's going to get a little messy, maybe a lot. Yeah. That's all completely accurate and describes kind of how it went. Um, yeah. When I first started working, I was very, you know, insecure and, and you know, when I grew up with my father in, in high school, we weren't particularly close in high school and he was, an alcoholic and he was very difficult to live with and he was very, very hard. So, you know, I, at an early age learned, uh, codependency. And so I was very like, what do we need to do to make that happy today? Mm -hmm. You know? And so you feel like you're inferior, you feel like you're stupid, you feel, and, and, and going to all these high schools and just all that uncertainty, I definitely did not feel like I was on the ball. So when I met someone that I felt was, you know, I used, I fell into that role of, she was too pretty for me. She was too successful for me. Why would she want to be with me? You know, but this is as good as I'm ever going to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I loved her and I, I'm not, you know, I wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then I thought all that would change. And I had never, you know, all the things that happened, I had never seen a therapist. I had never talked to anybody about my emotions. You know, my family just to talk about that. We certainly didn't have the resources to do that. It wasn't as common. And so as time went on, you know, I, I just kind of fell into that. And I, I guess, you know, there's about 10 years. I really don't remember very well. And it's not from drugs or alcohol. It's just, mm -hmm. it's that, you know, we had two kids, mm -hmm. you know, five years after Mary and I were the first kid. And then the daughter three years later, and you just got caught up in that, mm -hmm. you know, that whole cycle of mm -hmm. you're just on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. But from a work standpoint, you know, I was always pretty insecure about what I was going to do and started in journalism, ended up going to the city as a spokesperson back in 1999 when Mayor Coleman, former Mayor Coleman took office, mm -hmm. had the good fortune of connecting with his people and slowly but surely worked my way up, you mm -hmm. know, through a number of jobs. But I was really focused on the career, but you know, the, the good thing about being insecure and not feeling good about what you're doing is I worked really hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I didn't realize till I was older and in a, place where I was managing people, how valuable what I did was, because mm -hmm. I just assumed everybody had the same work ethic and the same mm -hmm. drives. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was just doing more of wanting to please people and out of fear mm -hmm. and found out I was pretty good at the mm -hmm. political world and different things and made mm -hmm. myself available and eventually became Mayor Coleman's deputy chief of staff and his public utilities director. 
And as you know, when Mayor Ginther came in, I was his first chief of staff. And I think it was at that point that I thought, you know, I, I might have something here. I might actually be pretty good because Mayor Ginther was really the first person who sought me out. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because <clears throat> that's, that's how far into your career um, when you start to first realize, like, maybe I have something. Yeah, I was probably 44. Yeah. And you, in yeah, you were with Coleman for how many years? All 16. 16 years. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And, and I'm, I'm intrigued by, uh, and maybe it's just cause I like relate to it, you know, this idea of, uh, being insecure and then like pouring yourself into your work and how it, it, it sort of like turns out to, in many ways, a fuel a lot of your success, right? You, you don't see yourself that way. You don't really know that's what's yeah. happening when it's happening. But the truth is, is having like um, a need to be validated or to prove yourself or, you know, um, gain some confidence or, you know, an insecurity that's underneath it all yeah. drives you to work hard. Yeah. You know, I mean, in my case, like I didn't think I was as smart as anybody else. And, you know, I didn't have a fancy degree. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just, I just worked really hard. And I had this idea of what I wanted to have as a life that, you know, I, I kept like fighting for to a point. I think, you know, it's up to a certain point. It can actually be pretty fueling to, uh, be insecure in, yeah, in a way for sure. Right. I mean, it's up to a point because if you're constantly trying to validate and prove yourself, you know, at a certain point that's, you know, uh, unhealthy. Yeah. I would agree with that. And, you know, over those years of w w working my way up, you know, the, the difficult part was always, like I said, when we, I don't know how most people are, but when we got married, we, we were in certain roles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people evolve and certainly, you know, I don't think anybody would have bet on me that knew me when I was 18, that I'd be where I am now professionally, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think when you, when you meet someone at that age, you know, we just stayed in those roles. So as, as, it, as it went on, you know, I guess I became a little more resentful that I wasn't getting in my mind, the credit mm -hmm. that I deserved for working harder and making more money and becoming mm. more successful. I was almost resented or jealous. So, you know, that's how I felt mm -hmm. my insecurity. Mm -hmm. And so that was always um, a struggle, you know, and then work, just what we did, you know, I attended bar and was in politics, you know, alcohol was always a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I drank quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know, during those years. And that became a way to kind of shut out what you said earlier, the mm -hmm. stuff that you bury, I thought I'd worked through mm -hmm. or I'd outgrown. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a better way to but put it. But you like intellectually, like you knew what happened. Y yes. Right? I could talk about it and I could intellectualize right. it and I could be somewhat of a victim about it, but I didn't let it bring me down, even though it was manifesting in other ways. I just mm -hmm. didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fascinating because we don't know it at the time. You know, you, you just can't, you know, you're operating at the level of consciousness that you're at and you think you have things compartmentalized and that you're focused, you're in your career, you're having some success, you're trying to balance things at home um, and you're having drinks, right? And, yeah. and you know, uh, was in your family, right? It's, it's also not just in the family, it's like societally yeah. everywhere, and, and I don't know if it's, if that's true in, in the world of politics or if there are other, yeah, right. And people in your role, like, you know, uh, it's a tough job. It's a, it's a grind, really tough. I mean, you're yeah. on all the time and, you know, a drink probably, uh, was what you felt you needed at the time, you yeah. know? Um, and in reality, you know, it, it, it was only going to get you so far. Yeah. And, and one of the things, honestly, one of the, First times you and I talked, you know, it kind of dawned on me, you know, I drank because I thought people liked that personality better because I didn't really think people based on my high school and college and losing my brother, I always thought it was me. And so, mm. you know, in addition to the drinking, the personality, I talked to a lot of people, I could be obnoxious, you know, I could be loud, but mm. I always thought that's what people wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think they liked 
Mm-hmm. And, I, and I lost sight of who I really was, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So I became, as I got success with this, I thought, hey, it's working. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it works till it doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it really did. Mm-hmm. It allowed me to be something that I didn't have the confidence to be on my own. The alcohol and that new personality, I was able to survive. And I did have a therapist tell me years later, you know, describing that phenomenon. She said, you know, what happened as a result of your childhood, you know, your two brothers are more, uh, that's a more common outcome. The fact mm. that you survived and are here where you're at today is, is an anomaly. Mm. And so that personality that you created to protect yourself from all the trauma that you had was really smart, mm-hmm. but now it's turning on you mm-hmm. and it's taking you down. Yeah. And so you got to go back to who you were before you created this person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not this, that makes sense. And, and that was, you know, kind of, as you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll get to it, but it's been six years, a lot of therapy mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, I can see that now, but I didn't obviously when yeah. I was in it. I thought I'm getting promoted. I'm getting better jobs. I'm getting more responsibility. I'm making more money. So mm-hmm. obviously I'm, this is working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 you know, to make matters more complicated, when you, when you are told to go back to that person who you were and you don't really even know who that person yeah. is, you know, most people just, you know, say, fuck it. You know, I, that's, I don't even want to try to figure that out. It's too hard. Yeah. You know, to actually go back and go, well, who am I? Yeah. Right. I don't even know who I am, you know, anymore. Yeah. What's at my essence, you know, who am I really? Yeah. And then choosing to, to try to find that and be that is tough, tough work. And, you know, I'm curious about, uh, you know, kind of what happens up until a point where you decide that you um, are going to do that work, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. and, and, and maybe even just to back up a little bit, you know, um, I'm kind of curious about the path in politics, you know, you, you, you were in journalism, you know, maybe that was, um, you know, first job out of college kind of thing. But I, but I know, and I mean, I know enough about you to know, like that was actually something that was uh, of interest to you still mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. right. I mean, you like to write. Um, so I'm kind of curious if you could just kind of, you know, let's back up a little bit, talk about that, like that 16 years, the, pa- the path to it and the 16 years of being in that role, you know, and, and, I mean, listen, you know, I know all the parties here too, not as well as you do, but, you know, as a, as somebody in this community, I've seen both Mayor Coleman and Mayor Ginther do their things and um, boy, a lot has happened Mm -hmm. under their leadership and you were there for all of it, Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know, maybe you could just talk a little bit about life, you know, in that, in that job. Yeah. I was an English major and I always just really was drawn to reading and writing. And uh, that was the easiest way for me to get a degree, honestly. I just thought that's what I excel at. I'll do that. And thought, I'll just be a writer. And obviously it's harder than it looks. So I got a job at Suburban News Publications. They were actually owned by the other paper in Columbus Monthly. So I eventually worked my way up to those two publications. That's where I met then Council President Coleman, a bunch of the other people that are involved and still involved in the community today. Um, I was tending bar three nights a week to make money because I was making zero dollars and that was causing stress at home and we had a baby. And, uh, you know, so I tried to get a job at the dispatch and dailies couldn't just, just a really long year. Mm. Couldn't, couldn't get jobs, kept finishing second in these public relations jobs, like spokespeople at the city, which is where I wanted to go. And they said, you need public relations experience. So I went to work for a firm for a year. Uh, eventually got a job at the city in public utilities as a spokesperson. And once I was there, I thought, okay, I'm making decent money. I got benefits and I'll just live life for a while. Kluka got bored, thought I can't do this for 30 years. There's a lot of great people that work in government for a long time. I realized I couldn't do the same thing over and over. So I made friends with people in Mayor Coleman's office and just said, how can I help? So Mm -hmm. through volunteering, knocking on doors, doing all the stuff that people don't want to do, you know, they began to include me in things. Mm -hmm. And then they realized 
Uh, public utilities, as you know, doing what you do professionally is a very important department for the mayor and the city. And um, it was good to have someone they knew and understood their world. So I became that liaison. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, people would leave and I just kept moving up, went to the development department, uh, ran a bond campaign, just kept making myself useful. And uh, then Mayor Ginther, or I'm sorry, Mayor Coleman asked me to be his deputy chief of staff. And that was where I really felt like I was getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Mayor Coleman, you know, uh, did so much for me. Like he, mm -hmm. I, I think he's such a great mayor. And I think mm -hmm. people that are now in Columbus and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in charge of downtown now and, and run it, not in charge, but you mm -hmm. know, my job is to help develop downtown. And mm -hmm. I think people forget how far we've come and, oh and, and God, he yeah. deserves so much credit to your oh, earlier yeah. point. Yeah. So yeah. it was great working yeah. for him and I learned so much. And then he made me his public utilities director, which was great because I got to go back where I started, mm -hmm. which was really odd because as I said, people remember you in the role they meet you. So <laughs> there was a lot of people that didn't think I could do that job and were yeah. probably hoping I would fail. And there was a lot of people that wanted me to succeed. And, you know, that was a really good uh, experience for me because I, I don't think, you know, I was the prototype. But by the time I was done, I think everybody, for the most part, would agree I, I was successful at it. So mm -hmm. that gave me a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, um, maybe you could just speak a little bit about what appears like in each job that you were saying yes to, getting elevated into, you really didn't have any experience doing those no. things, right? No. So, um, you know, uh, is it, is it the work ethic? Is it the determination? Is it, you know, courage? Like you, you end up being very, uh, successful in each one of those jobs. I mean, it's, this isn't a handout here. You, yeah. you you're yeah. moving up for, yeah. for performance reasons. Right. But, um, but, you know, I don't talk about like how you see that. Yeah, it was, it was very nerve wracking. I think everybody has that point in their career where they're put in a position that they're either going to be successful or not. And uh, I, I think what I discovered as I got older is I did have a skill, but that skill comes so naturally to me. Like most mm -hmm. people that are good at something, they say, I don't understand why you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And managing people and interacting with people. And maybe it's part of how I grew up and trying to make everybody happy and juggle everything. Mm -hmm. I just can stay very calm in a chaotic world. And mm -hmm. I can see your point of view, your point of view, mm -hmm. the other person's point of view and, and come to consensus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, especially in government, you're trying to land in the middle. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't be either or in government. You have to serve everybody. Mm -hmm. But you do have to make decisions. And so I think my ability to, to manage, make people feel included, um, just works. Mm -hmm. And the truth is public utilities has 1300 people and they all have a role and they're all trained and they're all really good at what they do. And my job is not to do any of their jobs. And mm -hmm. that's where the mistake is of people who thought I would fail. My job is to manage them mm -hmm. and to support them. And if I support them, they're going to support me. Mm -hmm. And that's in large part what I attribute to my success there. Mm -hmm.